something that's concerned me since having children and also recovering from eating disorders is that my behaviours don't get passed on to them. My friend Emily Leary, who you might know from a blog, A Mummy Too, um, decided to write a book. So it's not just a cookbook, it's steps to help your kids eat pretty much anything. So to go against the fussy eating, um, because actually my girls, when they were a lot younger, they weren't that fussy. They'd eat mussels with their dad and um, all sorts of things. And it's like they've developed, uh, maybe it's going to nursery and school, but they've developed a fussiness. Um, so I love the idea of this book. <laughs> and you may hear kids in the background as it's feeding time soon in the zoo which is my mad house but what I wanted to talk about today as you know I'm recovering from an eating disorder I've had some form of eating disorder since I was about 11 years old and um, it was anorexia originally and then bulimia um, and whilst I'm mostly recovered um, there's still lots of idiosyncrasies, so I have lots of issues around certain food groups. So I guess I'm not really recovered, actually. Um, and something that's concerned me since having children and also recovering from eating disorders is that my behaviours don't get passed on to them. And so I've really, really tried to challenge myself when it comes to eating and what I eat in front of them. So I try not to make a big deal. I don't say things are gonna make you fat or thin. And um, we talk about being strong and how good it is to be healthy and strong um, so you can do exercise. So we really try and focus on health. And my husband's actually a chef. So I think his passion for food counterbalances my avoidance of food and the fact that I just kind of see food sometimes is just a necessary evil um but that said about 18 months ago they really are getting hungry in the background about 18 months ago we started a cafe at our local art gallery and that has really really helped me because it's challenged me to be more interested in food, to make Instagrammable food, to make food looks good. Also, I'm vegan. And that has really helped me um, to be more experimental with what I try. I am now vegan. I have been a lifelong vegetarian. And when I was on an eating disorder unit, we weren't allowed to be vegan because for obvious reasons, um, a lot of dietary requirements tend to be eating disorder inspired but I can genuinely say I've actually found veganism has helped me because I'm so limited in what I can eat I've had to challenge some of my no foods aka like my phobia foods which for me is to do with carbohydrates and um, but I have started um, to challenge these and I do get an appetite now I do get hungry and I actually look forward to going out to eat which I never thought I would say but I am still very aware acutely so having two kids um, and two girls that I don't want them to pick up on any issues with food I want them to love food um, so when my friend Emily Leary, who you might know from a blog, A Mummy Too, um, decided to write a book, so it's not just a cookbook, it's steps to help your kids eat pretty much anything. So to go against the fussy eating, um, because actually my girls, when they were a lot younger, they weren't that fussy. They'd eat mussels with their dad and um, all sorts of things. And it's like they've developed, uh, maybe it's going to nursery and school, but they've developed a fussiness. Um, so I love the idea of this book. And it's full of beautiful 
images and a phase step so look now if i ever get my kids to eat smashed avocado on sun-dried tomato toast um i will be amazed but it seems possible by following these phases to get your kids to eat anything so let's go through the phases of getting your kids to eat anything phase one putting the unfamiliar in the familiar so emily talks about putting unfamiliar ingredients in something familiar so for example she says about putting lentils in a shepherd's pie um or you could put apple pie ingredients into a smoothie like so um, and she's also got a meal plan um, and a phase one recipe so you could put spinach in meatballs for example um, or chicken and vegetable black noodle stir fry or rainbow pizza so I love that idea of to start with let's be honest kids like familiar things and they always tend to go for fish and chips um, and actually look at how delicious if i did eat fish that would be so it's homemade fish fingers and chips so rainbow pizza i love the look of that because it looks so appetizing now i think to start with my children will struggle with um like red peppers but that said, maybe part of it is my mentality of what they'll struggle with. Um, and we're definitely going to give it a go. So that's phase one, putting the unfamiliar in the familiar. So if you've got any ideas for recipes, I'd love you to comment them below. Or if you still can't comment on my videos, do chat to me on social at Mama May blog. So let's go to phase two. So phase two is educate. Now this I find is essential. So it's exploring lots of different types of food, whether that be going foraging, going to your local allotment, if there is one, there's lots of community allotments if you check out Incredible Edible. Um, and also we have a Green Tracks Enterprise, which is like a community allotment where you can buy the produce but you can also find out about it or there's apple tree allotment nearest where you can go and grow your own things and pick and eat them and um, now to find the fun in foraging and growing your own i think really really does help because there's that sense of pride once you've grown it and um, it doesn't become this disgusting vegetable as my children will probably call them and um, it actually becomes something amazing so for example when the kids had a strawberry patch at their um, nan and granddad's all my days all they would eat was strawberries because they were growing it and they even grew some cherry tomatoes and ate them as well so we'll definitely be experimenting with that um, and and in each recipe you write a reflection journal you know to see how it's gone on so there's some delicious ones herby scones with black olives now my kids actually bizarrely love olives so maybe that's something i could incorporate more and maybe into some pasta dishes or we could have a go at making our own pasta um, and then you can see here this looks delicious very berry toast um, and they're all really nice simple recipes but look how great how instagrammable is that um, and then you've got rocket top gnocchi with red pesto now I love gnocchi so actually if we were to be creating stuff like this I think that would make our family time at meal times easier rather than creating a dish for the kids a dish for my husband a dish for me because I reckon that would satisfy me the kids and my husband and um, rather than us all eating separately and um, because that is a goal of mine at the moment is to try and eat more at the dinner table as we get super busy and are rushing around and then end up all eating in front of the tv and i know it's awful but i'm sure there's a lot of you who do it as well anyway let's skip to phase three 
phase three is all about finding the fun in food so that's the joy of food now we all love scrolling through instagram and looking at instagrammable dishes the only ones i ever post are ones from the cafe as my cooking skills are not great um but it is looking at the joy of food so the book says task one fun with color so see if you can design a meal with all your favorite colors in it which i think the kids will love um, and it's a nice challenge and we all love a challenge in this house especially gaining points against each other um, and then task two boosting the fun in an everyday meal so you jot down a few of your favorite meals and look at those you've enjoyed in the other two phases now choose one or two of those meals and let's start to think about how we could make them more fun so for example could you introduce new or unusual shapes try spiralizing instead of grating or using mini cookie cutters to shape pieces of carrot um, and I've seen so many really cool Instagrammable lunch boxes um, for kids. And I do really want to look at doing like a bento box lunch box for the girls when they have it at nursery and school. Um, my friend also makes um, Korean food. So her kids get like Korean sushi for lunch. And oh my gosh, that looks amazing. Um, and then so how could you naturally change the colour to something to make it bright, varied or unexpected. So with some spinach into a white sauce to make it green. How could I use different serving dishes or decorative elements to add fun? So you might want to invest in some colored plates um, or crockery. And how could I make, arrange food on the plate to add a bit of fun? So there's lots of different ideas. So you've got pancake plate art i love that so using lots of fruit and putting it on pancakes and actually i do a lot of community work and when i was doing a vlogging project and um, we did a vegetable orchestra now it might sound bizarre um making instruments out of different vegetables and fruit so like we had a bongo drum out of a um, watermelon and um, we had carrot flutes and um, but then afterwards all the insides and bits we ate and the kids were much more enthusiastic about trying the different vegetables after having some fun with them and um, so we've got pancakes or bright red beetroot risotto that looks delicious um, and you've got tra traffic light veggie burger stacks now look how good that looks so actually I think this will help us to eat as a family because normally we do separate um, oven fajitas with cauliflower tortillas oh my gosh cauliflower and egg for the tortillas they look so good um sticky hands vegetable soda bread now i love the smell of fresh bread so that is stage three so phase four is stepping into the unknown and um, and it's all about pushing food boundaries and looking at different ways you can combine different food groups now i'd be really interested in this because i struggle with you know pineapple on pizza that 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 goes to my head i can't do it um but actually i like the look and i like the idea of gradually challenging yourself so i think i'm gonna have to do these phases with the kids because my eating is quite fussy i'm starting to realize um so they've got here ricotta and pear mini lasagnas and they look super cute um i love the idea of how it's laid out um or carrot and coriander baked fritters um, so that's grated carrot, red onion, potatoes, eggs, plain flour, garlic clove, fresh coriander, olive oil, greasing salt and pepper. Um, and you can make a big batch of those so you can freeze them. Because let's be honest, lots of us are very busy and it's really hard to find time to cook.
and again if like me you're vegan I tend to replace eggs with um, aquafaba which is basically the juice out of uh, chickpeas so a can of chickpeas the juice and that tends to be a good um, egg replacement you can buy egg replacements but they tend to be super duper expensive and um, so that's what I use but I'd love to know any tips that you use and um, butternut squash waffles now I love like courgette cakes and stuff so I wonder if this is like that butternut squash cut into pieces with plain flour wholemeal flour baking powder olive oil semi-skimmed milk or oatly or soya milk um free range eggs ah so that sounds really nice and then you've got honey on top like so or you can use treacle um so i love the idea oh strawberries and cream pasta now my husband as he's a chef has used strawberries and savory things but i never have and um, so this would be very interesting so it's strawberries with a balsamic glaze So, oh, before we go, veggie scotch eggs, how good do they look? But I can't have eggs anymore. Um, but anyway, hopefully the kids will like him. Anyway, last but not least, let's go to phase five. So phase five is all about cementing variety. So this is where you get to make your own recipes with your family and you get to try out all the different phases and take the best of what you've learned and what works for you and your family. So I love the idea of you almost creating like a recipe book for your family so you've made it with your kids so you know that they're on board with it as well. And Emily's got lots of ideas with um, creative thinking around food and deconstructing and reconstructing the humble salad um, and having lots of different types of food groups so for example you could have different cereals you could make yourself and um, now cereals do concern me because of all the sugar in the ready-made ones so i do love the idea of making our own cereals um, and storing them in like little kilner jars which also helps with lack of plastic and um, but also letting the kids add their own little bits to the muesli or granola or uh, and one of my favorite dishes is falafel pitters so i will be very happy if i can get the kids to eat them as well and um, or you've got chili sesame broccoli now i'm not sure how much my kids will take chili as even a little bit of pepper they say is spicy but hopefully after all these phases they'll be more willing to try um, and after all it's just we get used to whatever we're exposed to also they've got like some ideas as well like pickles quick pickled ribbon cucumbers with fennel and chili that's a great idea um i've got egg fried quinoa i use oh no it's quinoa in it oh i forget quinoa i always said quinoa yeah, and it's quinoa apparently um and then a bit of everything snack plate and that's what we absolutely do love in this house we like to have picnics and buffets of different things. There's all your five phases of Emily Leary's Get Your Kids to Eat Anything. So phase one, put the familiar into the unfamiliar. Phase two, educate. Phase three, discover the fun in food. Phase four, step into the unknown. And phase five, cement variety. So make sure you pick up a copy of this book. Emily kindly sent me this book um, free of charge. Um, so it was gifted. Um, but all views in this vlog are my own. And hopefully this will help transform mine and my family's eating plans. So my goal at the moment is to eat at the table. And then we're going to start to introduce these different phases and I'm going to join the kids on the journey too. 
Anyway, peace, love and shimmies from me and I will see you all very soon. Please do click, click like and subscribe um, and if you still can't comment below, do chat to me on social at Mama May blog. Anyway, see you all soon.